Good evening, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and tonight we're getting back to our regular type of programming. We're talking about flight simulation tonight, specifically X-Plane. X-Plane 12 is coming sometime very soon in 2022. The demo is going to be released as they actually release the overall full version. But what I want to talk about tonight are system requirements for a flight simulator, specifically what's been released on Lemon Research's own website talking about the requirements for X-Plane 12. Now I'm going to put a link here up on the screen and it's down in the comments section or description section down below and it will lead you to where I have this information from as well and I'm going to put it up on the screen here as I read over a few things and then go over them as well after that. So let's talk about the overall minimum minimum hardware requirements and if you know anything about flight simulation it's a lot better to go above and beyond the minimum requirements to get the most realistic and well just enjoyable experience out of any of your flight simulators out there so let's jump right in so minimum hardware hardware requirements will be an intel i3 i5 i7 or i9 cpu with four or more cores or an amd ryzen 3 5 or 7 or 9 those with other CPUs should try the demo before purchasing. Memory, at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. Video card, a DirectX 12 capable video card from NVIDIA or AMD with at least 2 gigabytes of VRAM. So, back to my ugly mug. Let's talk about this for a quick second. These are the minimum requirements. And it's pretty vague when you think about it. So, we're talking about something within the last two to three generations of Intel chips, AMD chips, I would say, if I'm personally suggesting to somebody, a 10,000 Intel chip, so a 10700K would probably be the oldest generation I'd really recommend, but as you're gonna see here shortly, they're gonna recommend things even older. But what I'm gonna try to say is this, X-Plane 12 is going to lead you over the next three to five years of X-Plane's overall refresh cycle. So you're not gonna to wanna to take something that's already four or five years of generation old CPU or GPU hardware, you wanna get something a little bit newer. And when we're talking about four cores, that makes sense. You should be able to get away with four cores, especially with the brand new Intel chips coming out, their new i5, and some of the i3s look like they could probably do a pretty good job with an X-Plane 12, let alone X-Plane 11 and Microsoft License 2020. Um, eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, depending on what kind of RAM you're going with these days, eight gig is pretty cheap. I would strongly recommend for flight, sim flight simulation purposes, 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes are really the sweet spot. Preferably go all the way up to 32 gigabytes. Even Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is gonna be right around 16 on a usual basis. But as those scenery packs get larger, as the overall flight simulation gets larger and larger for especially the systems in the aircraft and they get better, you're gonna want more, especially with X-Plane 12, bringing in more and more realism for the sense of the systems. If you go to some of their videos that they're talking about now, they're gonna have complex systems more so than they've ever had in the past, which will take up more of your RAM most likely. And then below that, GPU. They're talking about two gigabytes of VRAM on a GPU. And if you're looking at current generation GPUs, I don't know if you can find one with only two gigabytes. You're gonna be looking at at least four to six gigabytes, some all the way up to, I think, was it 16 or 18 gigabytes for some of the new video cards, but you're looking in crazy price territories. And honestly, I'd say anything that's a 3060 Ti or a 6700 from uh, AMD, those are all gonna kick butt for X-Plane 11 and most likely X-Plane 12. So now let's get set up and let's take a look at the recommended system or hardware requirements. So I'm going to throw that up now. So CPU, they're talking about an Intel i586K, meaning K is unlocked, so you can overclock that processor or a Ryzen 5 3500 or better. Memory, 16 to 24 gigabytes of RAM. So let's say 16 or more. 32 is the preference on my side if I'm telling somebody. Video card, a DirectX 12 capable, capable video card from NVIDIA or AMD with the least four gigabytes of VRAM. They recommend a 1070 GTX or better or similar from AMD. So back to this ugly mug again. Let's talk about this. Intel i5-8600K. That's going back one, two, three, four, almost five years now at this point. Get a 10 series Intel chip if you're gonna go for an older generation. They're cheap right now. 
But the big problem you're going to find is if you go too far back for a CPU, you're going to be having trouble finding a motherboard to fit that CPU. So what I recommend is try to figure out which one you want in a sense of if you're building a brand new desktop, are you going for efficiency or are you going to go for the maximum frame rates you can get? And then on top of that, are you an Intel or AMD person? They're both good. I built my recent uh, rebuild for my desktop with an AMD chip for the first time, and I've been really, really happy with it. But I'm really intrigued to see these uh, 12th generation Intel chips with their small core, big core, or small core, big core design. It should be rather promising from all the current and uh, just kind of ahead of, ahead of time benchmarks we're seeing. I think Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 X Plane 11 are going to really do really well on these new Intel chips, but time will tell. I think AMD is going to do a good job countering, but overall, Intel might finally put AMD back in their place of being number two in a sense of what people are buying on a regular basis. Memory, like I already said, if you can afford it, get 32 gigabytes of RAM when you're building your desktop, or if you have a laptop, upgrade the laptop's RAM all the way up to 32 gigabytes and you'll be happy. You'll thank me later, trust me. Video cards, DirectX 12 capable, so you're looking at an RTX 3060 and up. You could probably still get an RTX 2060 and that'll take care of you without a problem, but you're not gonna get the maximum visuals. You'll probably do very well with 1080p gaming, but if you are somebody who wants a 1440p screen or a 4K screen, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money to push that kind of power out, especially if you're X-Plane 11, X-Plane 12, or Microsoft Lightsum 2020. If you want those ultra graphic settings, you are gonna need an RTX 3080 or better I'd recommend you wait until the RTX 4000 cards come out because we are still seeing issues with some of these GPUs today maxing out on 4K quality with everything maxed out. Given, it might not be the GPU, it could just be the PCIe generation that we're currently stuck with, it just doesn't give the maximum bandwidth, but from all that I've seen, we're still not even utilizing the maximum bandwidth of PCIe Gen 4.0. So I don't think that's really the big issue here. I would say wait until the next generation of GPUs come out later this year. If you can't, look for an RTX 3070, a, uh, I forgot how they do them, but uh, the AMD uh, 6700 is, I would say, my bottom point, unless you really can't afford anything more so or less so than that, so you can get the 6600. And I think they have a budget-friendly one, the 6500 coming out soon, but in all honesty, if you're trying to build a serious flight simulation rig, I'd say 6700 from AMD or RTX 3070 are your best bets for bang for the buck and performance that you're going to get for X-Plane 12 or Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. So overall, I think we know where we stand for what to expect with X-Plane 12 and what you're going to have to put into it to get it to run smoothly at high settings or better. Basically, take whatever you're using for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and you've got it. If you're already using only X-Plane 11 and you're running on old hardware and it's already struggling, you have an idea of what you're going to need to upgrade later on. You might already have a decent enough CPU, now you just need a GPU when the GPU, GPU prices finally fall. Last thing to cover, and I am happy to see here, the supported operating systems. So, they will still have support for Mac, Linux, and Windows. That's great and it continues a trend that they've always done in the past. Now there's probably some kind of caveat here and there, but I'll throw this up on the screen so you guys can read that as well. There are a few other things that they have included on their dev blog, and one thing that I'd like to throw up that is interesting to me, they are saying they're gonna be reverse compatible for X-Plane 11 add-ons. However, there is a major catch to this. They explicitly state well-behaving add-ons. That can mean a lot of things. So I am going to be interested to see how many of the add-ons actually transfer from X-Plane 11 to X-Plane 12 when it's all said and done. Because there's a lot going on under the hood for X-Plane 12 and I think it will be interesting to see what the first few versions of X-Plane 12 bring us. I remember the first few versions of X-Plane 10, the first few versions of X-Plane 11, and there were some serious teething problems. I'm not going to say it's going to turn people off, 
But if you're somebody that's kind of going back and forth between X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, I would say hold on to that X-Plane 11 copy for the first few updates of X-Plane 12 before you jump over. And if you already own Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, depending on what you're using it for, you're probably happy and there will be no reason to go to X-Plane 11 or X-Plane 12. However, if you are somebody that's actually taking simming more and more serious to the point that you're actually going to go out there and learn to fly a real airplane, you might want to look at X-Plane 12 and X-Plane 11 at some point, if you haven't already. But I hope you guys like this video. Like and subscribe if you liked. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below because I'm really interested to see what these X-Plane 12 forecasts really play out to be and what it's going to require. I think usually with X-Plane, you kind of got to go with overkill at the beginning and then within the, the three versions after the initial release, it finally comes down to where it's usable depending on what your system requirements are. I remember back in the day with the Titan cards, some people had Titan cards for X-Plane 11 and they were still not able to push high frame rates with the maximum resolutions. It was just that much of a power, power hungry resource hog of a flight simulator, just like Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has been at times. However, I think one thing that Asobo got right Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 looks good without requiring the top bang for the buck cards or just overpriced cards, I should really say, with those RTX 3090s. You don't have to have a 3090 to make Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 look better than X-Plane 11. So I think the real test for Laminar Research here is going to be whether or not Austin and your team, if you guys can put forward a flight simulator that can match Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 visually while still maintaining your overall study level flight sim credentials. I can't wait to see what it is. So guys, keep the hard work up and I can't wait to play with this stuff when it comes out. Take care everyone, stay safe, stay healthy out there. See you again real soon, bye-bye.